somebody almost walked off with all my stuff and didn't care enough to send a note home saying I was late for my solo conversation or two sizes too small for my own tacky skirts. What can anybody do with something of no value on an open market? Did you get a dime for my things? Hey man, where you going with all my stuff? This is a woman's trip and I need my stuff to ooh and ah about. Honest to God, somebody almost ran off with all my stuff and I didn't bring anything but the kick and sway of it. Now give me my stuff. I want my arm with a hot iron scar. I want my leg with a flea bite. Yeah, I want my things. I want my countess feet and quick language back in my mouth. I want my own things. How I love them. Somebody almost ran off with all my stuff and I was standing there looking at myself the whole time. It wasn't a spirit that ran off with my stuff. It was a man whose ego walked around like Rodan's shadow. It was a man faster than my innocence. It was a lover I made too much room for. Almost ran off with all my stuff and the one running with it don't know he got it. I'm shouting, this is mine. And he don't even know he got it. My stuff is the anonymous ripped off treasure of the year. Did you know somebody almost ran off with me? Me in a plastic bag under his arm. Me. Somebody almost walked off with all my stuff. Okay, that was me being excited. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Hey guys. Hey. I got a surprise. <laughs> that was our very own Mimi Caldwell. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Mimi. Thank you, Mimi. Hey now, guys. This is what Mimi does. Yes. <laughs> For all of you guys who don't know, that was her. And I wanted you to hear the words before y'all, plus I want to surprise y'all, that Mimi's back, what? <laughs> oh, came back strong and mighty and telling us somebody walked oh. off, almost walked off with almost. all your stuff. Almost. You, I want you to tell, I want you to tell yourself who walked off with all your stuff mm. and mm. find out what your stuff is. Mm -hmm. Mm, Mimi, thank you. Welcome stuff. back to Sold that Out. Was some good We've been stuff. missing you. Yes, I you. Guys too. And I know you had the uh, situation down in Florida. We've been playing, praying for yeah. you. Did yes. you want to share a little yeah, bit of you. that? And what, what your... Sure. I mean, let me just say this. First of all, um, just coming here to Florida has been a faith walk. And I have had a ball the entire time. I'm so thankful that I was able to visit some of these places before Hurricane Ian, um, mm -hmm. because uh, I, you know I'm just glad I got a chance to see them. I'm glad I, I got a chance to enjoy some of these spaces before Hurricane Ian. But and people asked me, you know, like even my supervisor was like, "I'm so sorry," and you just got here, and I just feel so bad. I said, you know, first of all, this was a natural disaster, yeah. and I still don't regret. People say, you know, did you regret moving to Florida? No, I don't. I don't. Um, I'm thankful that um, I made it through it. I'm thankful yes. that what I prayed for when I first got here was community because in even the, in the community where I'm staying right now, people, in my opinion, weren't talking, you know, you would go out and walk, nobody would really speak. Now it was how, how did you do during the storm? And, you know, now it's this community. One of my neighbors the other day just knocked on my door and gave me some brownies. I was like, wow. that wasn't even happening before the, before, before the hurricane. And so I'm, I'm truly thankful. And, it, and in what it has done is just brought so many of us together. All the theater communities are helping one another, um, allowing each of us to use free space in their space. That's that was wonderful. unheard. It was a lot of competition at first, but Hurricane Ian brought people together. And the last little story, little fun, little fun story. Um, one of the things I wanted um, in my office was a window, not a window to see outside, 
but a window to see inside the next studio because that's where the kids would be rehearsing or doing classes or something. And I kept having to go, go around to the door and say, hello, every time I hear the door open. And I kept joking that I was going to bust a hole in the wall so I could see what was going on in the studio. Even this homeless man came in and just started plucking on the piano. And I was like, hello? So anyway, Hurricane Ian comes. There was six feet of water in our theater. Because wow. the, the theater wow. is right across the street from the Gulf. So okay. we literally saw a video. Somebody was upstairs in the apartment, came down, because the theater is up under an apartment, came down and was sh video sh um, taping all this water that had come in. Wow. So anyway, they, they the restoration committee came in and, and cleared out the, the floors, took the drywall down. They sent me a picture. Why behind the drywall? was a window. Wow. wow. The exact same window that I said, I, the kind of window that I wanted where they, the kids can't see inside my office, but I can see outside to them. Look at God. Exactly where I wanted the window. That's what's up. I said, Lord, mm -hmm. okay, this is another sign I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> Yes. So I, I, you know, I'm truly thankful. I'm truly grateful. I'm grateful that my aunt was here and, you know, we were together and we had already gotten our gas, our water, because our pastor had prepared us for a lot mm -hmm. of stuff and told us what mm -hmm. to do. Um, and she was an ex-cop from police from, from New York. So she knows what to do too. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we came through and God has just brought hope um, to Florida. So I'm blessed. Thank Amen. You. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Mimi, for sharing that because Absolutely. we were concerned and praying for you and all, Thank all you. the, um, do you say Floridians? Yes. Is that how we say it? Okay. Yes. So we were praying for you all and we thank God that you were able to bring the community together and what our pastor Duran and Jill has taught us in times like these, when it counts the most, when you need your neighbors, that's what the word of God saying. That's closer than a brother. Because if Absolutely. your brother is not there with you and you got a stranger, a neighbor that you don't know mm -hmm. and you need them too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. We appreciate you and welcome again back to SOS. We Absolutely. need you. Mm -hmm. Back in the house. You. Yes, <laughs> in the house. Yes. And thank you for that. Uh, we got something special for you guys today. And I can't wait. Keita got something special. It was her vision. We bought it, we executing it, and you guys are in for a treat. I am so excited. Yes. So on that note, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing with us. We thank you for Mimi being back here and she, yes. you know, uh, joining SOS again. And thank you for the safety of she and her neighbors and the entire state of Florida. Please bless them, Father God. Bless those who have need right now, whatever the need may be. Please comfort them, console them. And all the emotions that go through when you're losing and you see your house underwater. I don't know, Father God, what that feels like, nor have I experienced it. But Father God, please send your Holy Spirit yes, to comfort their heart and their minds there. Please, Lord, provide for them. Bless Keita today. Bless the tech crew. We got Joanne and Tiana and Tammy and Dave and Jordan. Please, Lord, bring us all together. And I thank you for blessing us to be together and bringing yes, us on one accord so we can bless your people and all of those in the audience. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. And may the Lord bless your home, your job, wherever you go to and fro, keep you safe. And we thank you for as we journey along the way and we reach an authentic self that we most of all be true to ourselves, be true to our God and true to our relationships. Yes. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Amen. Today's segment, webinar segment is Identity Switch. I'm going to turn it over to Keita. How are you, everyone? So um, before we go into this video, Gail, do we want to do the mission and vision purpose? Yeah, thank you for that. Because somebody mm -hmm. may be new to the uh, SOS today. So we want to bring the purpose and vision. Thank you for that, uh, Keita. Okay. That's why we That's need everybody on the team. Got my uh, sisters back. Hello. <laughs> So the mission, for those who don't know, we're providing a sisterhood community with an open space to express your whole single self. No judgment. Whatever yourself yeah. is, bring it to the plate. And the vision, our vision, we came together and sat down and wrote this out. 
and I wanted some acronyms because I'm like my church. We got uh, soldiers sold out, living, delivered, and everlasting righteous service. So I kind of wanted to mimic something like that. And we got for our mission, sold out single to spiritually invest in a nourishing God-centered lifestyle experience. Without that, sold out single don't exist. Our mission, our vision, and our purpose is always God-centered. And we want to raise awareness. Hey, you're single. All right. It's okay. Whether you feel single or not, whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you're, um, for those who've been married before and you're no longer married and you call yourself single, single divorce, single with kids, single separated, whatever you call yourself. Hey, our job, our mission is to bring awareness to you. So, cause we're promoting self-empowerment. We want to live our authentic self. We want to live our best self. And we're going to do that through truth and through a concentrated effort, practicing spiritual principles. You can't do it without practicing. You can't practice unless you know what you stand for. I know Pastor Jill used to say, um, and she had a seminar. It's called the YWHY um, seminar she had. If you lose your why, or if you forget your why, you will lose your way. Yes. Right? Right. Thank you for that, Keita. There you go, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and you can find that out on our website and you can bring it up under um, sold, uh, sold out, sold out single. But first you will have to go to the soulfactory.com and you can read more about our mission and vision. Thank you, Gail. All right, ladies and gents, whoever may be watching, uh, <laughs> we got a treat for you. It's a video. I had come across this, uh, this young lady. I've been following her on Instagram and uh, she did a TED talk. So I want you guys to uh, sit back and enjoy this TED Talk video and it's entitled Identity Switch. Well, you all know what today is, right? Today is Easter. I have a question for you. How many of you actually remember your Easter speech when you were be between the ages of like three, four, or five? Ask your neighbor, do you remember your Easter speech? You were standing there in your outfit, your Sunday's best, with your Easter basket or your pail waiting to say your Easter speech. I remember my Easter speech. I stood there waiting, and when they handed me the mic, I said, Jesus well. And that was it. I didn't have time to remember anything else because I was eager to get to that Cadbury bunny, the bunny that has eggs. I still don't understand that. Well, this person right here, that's me on Easter. Wasn't I cute? She was cute, honey. Unbeknownst to you, that little girl identity had been shifted. I remember as I grew up, I was very, had a very low self-esteem, no confidence, no boundaries whatsoever. When are you going to stop talking about survival and talk about thriving? So what do you mean? She said, you keep telling people of the bad, but not the good. At that moment, I realized my life had become my story. My entire life was wrapped around the traumas. I lived in a box, and this was my story, and I learned how to function inside of the dysfunction. At that point, I said, wait a minute. Who do I really want to be? Because, because of the low self-esteem and the no guidance, I ended up being homeless, lived in the shelter, lived in my car. I didn't know direction. We got to figure out who do you want to become? What does that look like? I said, OK, let me see what resonates with me. I said, I like feminine things. She said, OK, what does that identity look like? I said, it looks like Dominique uh, Devereaux in Dynasty. I said, it looks like Shirley Ralph in Moesha. She said, okay, what are you gonna do about that? 
She said, because what you need to be telling people is the life that you want is on the other side of your identity switch. The money that you don't have in the bank is based upon how you view yourself. The men that I chose was based upon how I viewed myself. My health was based upon how I viewed myself. So each and every one of you in here has an identity that is keeping you from getting to where you want. Now that is powerful. Mimi, Kida, everybody is listening. Um, so I won't start crying. I'm gonna take a moment because that is so deep. Not just identity switch, but identity theft. Yeah. And what Mimi shared when she shared with the poem when somebody walked off with all my stuff. And when I think about um, when Pastor Jill did the seminar on why, when losing, when you forget your why and you lose your way, I was all of that. I had an identity switch. Um, and you were here later when, when, when a sold out single crew shared their parts with them, with you all about, uh, what's the question? Um, who were you when you weren't being yourself? And let me tell you, when I thought about that and when I wanted to share this part with you all, I thought about the, um, the identity switch. And I would do that. I would switch. It all depends on my audience. Yeah. You know? It was, if I was with my mom, then I acted a, a certain way. Then I was at Either. school and I acted mm -hmm. another way. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. so much so that I would you, used to wear certain things to school because my mom wouldn't allow it and then switch clothes when I get there. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to be a little more something else, a little more something, something that my mom thought I was too fast, mm -hmm. you're too grown, you're mm -hmm. too this, you're too that. And so I would begin to, at, and then at school, I would be a certain way. Then at work, as I grew older and I got summer jobs and I would be that way, I would be, I would conform to the atmosphere of what that was, I thought was the expectation of me. Yeah. That's it. So, right. If my teacher wrote in my report card, I remember saying she was talkative. So then I'm going to try, I'm going to stop, I'm going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. That was not me. <laughs> but I thought I could be quiet. For anybody to read Eat, Pray, Love, when that lady had to go away, and go to that go to that camp or in mm -hmm. India had to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and, and take me now, Lord. <laughs> I'm do it. I'm going. They're going to arrest me because I'm going to find a way to. I might want to write a note. Or I'm going right. to say, <laughs> right. Can't do it. I'm going to make a sound. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm trying to be quiet. But I would switch. And and if I get a boyfriend, then I would switch to whatever his yeah. uh, expectation of me right so I remember going out with this younger person and I was older I didn't have any jeans at the time so I had to go out and buy jeans that wasn't who I was back then and so every time I remember as I was said I would share this story with you all I I would switch and it was it was it was me no mm -hmm. one asked me to switch myself right. I did it according to what I thought was the expectation Right. Or if people say things, oh, why'd you do that? Or why'd you wear that? Why do you have your hair that way? You like that? Mm -hmm. I thought I did when I put it on. <laughs> so you asked me. <laughs> Go ahead, me. Katrina, so I think, you know, I think we all have been there. We, For me, I was a chameleon. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And yeah. for those of you who do not know what a chameleon is, a chameleon is a lizard that were in whatever environment they're in, they change color. So if they're by a red flower, their, their skin turns red. If they're by something yellow, their skin turns, so they camouflage. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's who I was. One that made me that, I knew that my calling was to be an actor and to perform and, and to teach and all that good stuff. So it helped me definitely in my career choice, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the sick part was, and I'm gonna say sick, <laughs> the sick part was, that I couldn't tell the difference sometimes. Right. Like, you know, and, and when you say that, even when you were saying, Gail, that, you know, we, we did this, nobody asked us to, they didn't really ask us to, but there were unspoken cues. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. affirmed yeah. who we were being for them yes. at that moment. So I yes. know in my house, it was affirmed when I was the good girl yeah. because there was so much chaos yeah. And my siblings seem to be more rebellious and getting in trouble. 
So in order to give my mother peace of mind, I saw my niche. I played my part. My part was to be the good girl. So I mm-hmm. played that role. And so wherever I was, whatever those unspoken cues were, especially as people pleasers, we learn how to look for those different things. Yeah. You see, right. So we look, we know how to read body language. Yeah. We know how to read those nonverbal cues. We're we know how to read that facial expression. Yeah. That says, oh, oh, you agree. Oh, you're displeased with me. OK, let me figure out how to yep. change that facial expression. I see you, so, Sarita. It, yep. It's all of that. It's all of that. Keep going, uh, Mimi. I'm with no, you. no. I mean that 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 was it. I mean that that's just what she is saying is what what we have done right. as a disservice to ourselves. Right. Um, and even all of the things that you said, Gail, it's it's yeah. a to a disservice to ourselves. But that's who we became. As like she said, it was our survival. I hid that's behind right. those characters yeah. to survive because I was afraid half the time. I was right. afraid of being caught out there. I was afraid that people would find out that I was a public success and a private failure. Mm. I was afraid that I, because I really didn't like me, I was afraid that if they really got to know me, that they wouldn't like me either. So right. it was all fear. And I was hiding behind. I remember a long time ago, Deron, and Deron did this, this, this teaching where he had these little boxes and he made these walls. And they had stuff plastered all over the walls, like, you know, depression and all this other stuff. And I, I said, that's, that. that's me. Yeah. That's me. I'm every one of those boxes. And I hide behind this with a smile. Like that commercial with that lady that holds that, that thing yes. has a smile in front of it. Yes. That was me for years. Wow. For and years. you know, Mimi, I liked myself, but what I wanted more, I think, when I would go to different audiences or be in different atmospheres or environments, I wanted the people to like me. But I found that the me that I liked and the me that I truly was, they didn't like that me. Mm. Mm. So then I switched me. And then I was trying to be someone they could like. Wow. Mm. And when I, I, it's so hard being someone else. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's yes, so it's, it's, worth. it's so easy it's being worth yourself. Yes. I read a quote once that says, "It's best to be a first class you than a second class somebody else." Wow. And I said, so when I started being more of me, and when the people around me would express themselves that they didn't know that was me, or like complained, I just kept being me because that was the true me. I was hiding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I was suppressing and as the poem mm-hmm. and Mimi and Ted Talk said I was surviving yeah because whatever <laughs> I needed from my mom or my dad mm-hmm. or my family um and I needed them to like me enough to give me what I needed if I needed something right mm-hmm. so therefore I'm not going to upset them I'm not going to tick them off because I you know I'm because no I talk too much uh, so don't talk too much um, so I, I'll be quiet a little bit and so I can at least get something or whatever I need it, be it emotionally too. You want hugs and kisses from your mom and dad. You want to be welcomed by your siblings. You want someone to hear you when you're in a family meeting and you know, oh my God, there go Gail again, saying this and saying that. I would always shun of being me a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't use the word mm-hmm. always, but quite often I would remember like, oh my gosh, here she go. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I'm just being me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, not till years, sisters, this take years, years of practice, years. First, you got to acknowledge. First, you got to be taught. First, okay, we didn't know. I remember Pastor Jill used to say this to some of us sisters. I'll be glad one day when I meet you. Yes. Now we mm-hmm. have been with her mm-hmm. for years. But she knew we were altering yeah. who we were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she would say, I'll be glad one day when I meet you, mm. when I meet the real you. Mm. And, and you I'm know, thinking, for me, I'm sorry, Gail, no, I'm sorry. Go I right in. Go right well, in. I think, I think also when you said that it, it, it's a lot of work um, being this, I'll call it the alter ego or the alter you. 
um, um well, really, let's in call the, it the imposter yeah and, and well, i'll say this too that this is why i when i did that one woman show the five faces at ease I remember that. Because we all have these different faces, right? But going back to it, it's, it's work, I remember for me, my survival tools that I used that I didn't know I was using um, was lies and manipulation. So instead of really wow. saying what I wanted, because I was too afraid to like just to just be direct and just ask the question, I would manipulate certain things or manipulate the situation or and make you think that you came up with the idea <laughs> or I mean that's that's, somebody, that's that's scary I mean really though it's real it's yeah. real um and so um I remember when and and, and I don't, I don't want to jump jump the gun because I know we're supposed to be talking about some things later on but I know for me when things just kept cra came crashing down for me and you know, it, it was like I was just finally like tired and it was it's like the, the, the rug got pulled out from under me. I got to the point where I was like, good, because this is this was just too much work. Yeah. <laughs> it was just too Mimi, much it's to like all the balls. It's you know? like because you, you are you're an actor, you're an actress. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah. you were at, you were doing that all the time. Oh, so you were time. never out of character. Yeah. So it was like being yeah. in a character that's not you, but you're being in that character the whole time all the time and never yeah. coming back to being Mimi Caldwell. Yeah, and look, in theater, it's called method acting. <laughs> You'll get a character and you stay in that character all day, even in your private life, you're still in that character. I couldn't do that, it's just too much work. But the, 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 the other thing is when you said, I liked me, I just wanted other people to like me. I think sometimes, sometimes the real me would slip out, mm -hmm. but it seemed like she was getting rejected so I, because I valued their opinion more than what I felt about myself, I, I agreed with them and didn't mm -hmm. like her either. So, and I, you know, I think that, I think because you were operating in that, in that person that the two intertwined and you didn't know how to, and it may have looked like, because you were doing it so much, it was like, it could have been a simple gesture and they looked like they didn't like it and they were okay. It was like, no. You were paying too close of attention to their emotions, which was like, "Up, oh, let me go back in. Let me present this person." You know, and you know well, I'll, say, I'll, I'll, I'll say this: there, there was this one time. I think I may have said this before that I, I I was just being me. I was walking down the street. This is when I was a teenager. I had on this um, these were overalls were in style, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had on some overalls with a little strap hanging down because this is back in the nineties uh, mm -hmm. or eighties. And then I had I had on this metallic gold headband, um, purple, um, right uh, long right thing, thing, gold gold chucks, and big hoop earrings. I was just oh, being wow. me, right? Just up video I, this girl. was me. Yes. This was me. And I see that this is my my old church. See my pastor's wife, and she happens to come down the street as I was walking, and she stopped and she said, "Oh." <laughs> She says, oh, Mimi, where are you going to play? <laughs> now, I laughed today. <laughs> it's funny, but right, Sharita? I'm with you. <laughs> but I was like, no, this is, what's wrong? This is me. But now, now, you know, when I see things and I wear certain things, I love it. I celebrate that part of me. And I remember someone telling me, she said, Mimi, we just wasn't ready for you. We just didn't know what to do with you. But, but now that that person has a family member that reminds them of me, uh -huh. <laughs> they're like, we just didn't know. We just I didn't see you, know. Tawanda. We she said, this is good. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Yeah, I mean, she's feeling you. You know, this is this is good because when even the way we dress, it, however you are. I remember my cousin said to me, I bought these shoes and I wore them. She said, oh, those are ugly. I said, thank you. She said, you know, I said they were ugly. <laughs> I was like, I know, but because yeah. you don't got to wear them and you didn't buy them, I figured I'm going to still take it as a compliment. Yeah. That's this, it. I was trying to break out a little bit, right? Yes. So when I started breaking out, I was being rebellious. So I, you know, I went from trying to, uh, uh, accommodate people to when I got mad, then I just rebellious, do what mm -hmm. I want, be how I want. 
and I dare somebody to say something. I didn't do a smooth transition to who I am today, sisters. Okay, don't do it the way I did it. I broke <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, you want to you want to do that thing and really, really, as Shakespeare said, to thy own self be true. Yes. So do that first. Be true to yourself, even if nobody likes yourself. You like you. That's God right. God made you. God made your personality. Yes. He made it what it is. And there are times when we have to um, conform to the to the atmosphere. If you at a banquet dinner, Mimi is not on the program. I don't expect her to get up and sing in the middle of the program, right? Mm -hmm. So there are certain things, of course. Um, Tawana, what you say? I love learning me. Thanks, ladies, and I've lost some friendships because of that. Hey, yeah. true friendship. Yeah. People that really love you, that's really your friend, won't leave you. Yeah. That's right. Because they accept you for who you mm -hmm. are. That's it. Mm -hmm. No matter how you are, I'm not saying yes. they're going to help you, correct you, uh, love you, and say, "Look, you might want to check that, Gail." You know, hey, watch yourself or whatever. These are true friendships, so they'll do that. They love mm -hmm. you, right? Yeah. So the true friendships, they would, they were hanging there with you because they understand the importance of freedom of choice, freedom of who you being yourself, right? None of us are identical. We are similar but we're not identical to the point of that I can't tell Gail from Keita and Keita from Mimi, right? Yeah, right, right? We can have the same goals, the same mission and working right. toward all of that in unison. However, I can't be mad at Keita for being Keita, can't be mad at Mimi for being Mimi, can't be mad at Joanne for being Joanne and, and Marlene and Tiana, all the quiet people. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm saying good morning. You know, where everybody at? Y'all up? <laughs> tell you sisters when you free yourself yes you would allow others to be free come on and yeah. hit that thing Keita. all right so look uh thank you and gail and mimi for sharing part of your stories um you want to revisit then we do, will but when gail asked me to think about a topic for this uh month's workshop i think of that week prior, I had just watched the TED Talk that you guys <laughs> watched. And I'm telling you, we only gave you a snippet. So if you get a chance, go back and watch it. Her name is April Mason. Um, you can just Google it. And uh, as I began to listen to it, I was sitting in my living room and I pondered over what I had just heard. And so immediately I got my phone and started recording my thoughts, journalizing. And um, I walked away from it to give it time. And then a couple of days later, I went back and I listened to the recording. And this time I wrote out my thoughts. And so I wanna share, if I can, those thoughts. And maybe uh, something that you hear will ignite some questions that will have you uh, thinking about who you were when you were not being yourself. Uh -huh. So my initial thought, <clears throat> the initial thought that crossed my mind after April's TED Talk was these two questions. One, have you ever been so frustrated with life or felt like your family did not set you up with the proper life tools to succeed? Or two, have you ever blamed or pointed the finger at others? I sat there and I thought about these two questions and uh, just like so many of you, I answered yes. But my answer was to yes was to both of the questions. The more I pondered over the questions, the more I began to look deep within myself Eventually, I came to the realization that at some point, I, you, have to take responsibility for your own life. No matter what cards you are dealt, ultimately, you are responsible for living a God-centered life. When you know better, you make different choices in life. You have to let go of all the anger and accept that your family did the best they could and gave you what was passed down to them. For look within meant that I had to start at the beginning. And when we start from the beginning, it allows us to understand how we end up where we are today. Recond reconditioning our mind to become her or him, for some gentlemen that are watching it, you must go back to what makes you you. Um, you, must, you. You must figure out where your beliefs and values come from, where they pass down through your family or over time and life experiences that have, um, or, and life experiences was that how you came up with your beliefs and values? Do you, um, why do you believe what you believe? Are you stuck at an age where trauma occurred or has God revealed to you what you believe? 
Why do I think the way that I think? Are you emotionally driven or spiritually and factually driven, led by the Holy Spirit? Why do I perceive things the way I do? Is this um, as a result, a result of being hurt or misled or misunderstood in your life? You must undergo this underlying unearthing because nothing can create uh, nothing can be created successfully on an unstable foundation. Uh, you will not become the best version of yourself yourself without understanding your current state. This requ requires a lot of self reflecting, but it's worth it. So go back as far as you can, even if it's painful, because this is a part of where your identity stems from. Who are you? What experiences brought you to this point? And so then I was uh, researching some scriptures, some Bible scriptures. So I came up with uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. This is the message version. And it says, when you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. I love that. Wow. Um, another one was Proverbs 13, 20. This is the Amplified. He who walks as a companion with wise men will be wise, but the companions of conceit, dull-witted fools are fools themselves and will experience harm. Wow. My Lord. And the last uh, scripture that I found was 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16, Amplified. But in your hearts set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confidence, assurance um, that is within you. Yet do it with respect and see to it that your confidence is entirely clear. I mean, your conscience is entirely clear so that every time you, you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or uh, attack your good behavior in Christ will be shamed by their own words. Wow. Mm. That's deep. It is. So my final thoughts and, and some questions to ponder on um, is this, your identity, how you identify yourself determines how you approach life. Oftentimes we tie our identity to the things we do. There's nothing wrong with being good at what you do or striving to be great at something. But when that thing takes the place of the one who created all things, that's when we begin to lose whose we are. Hey, can you repeat that? Yes. How you identify yourself determines how you approach life. Oftentimes we tie our identity to things we do. There is nothing wrong with being good at what you do or striving to be great at something. But when that thing takes the place of the one who created all things, that's when we begin to lose whose we are. And then the three questions that I want you to ponder on is, does my current identity give me the results that I want? Oh, that's a good question. My story, what I've lived versus my story, what I present to the world. And uh, this is just a statement, seek God, dwell with the right community. This is what we talked about being around the right people and tell your story. So I wanna to go to the, that back to that first question. Okay, does your current identity give me or you the results that you want? Let's go on and hit that. <laughs> come on, come on with it. Think about it. Does my current identity give me the results that I want? I'm a work in progress. Um, I'm working on that. I can identify some areas uh, where change is needed. I am in constant um, communication with God, the Holy Spirit, um, and friends, community. Um, 
so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, if I had to put a number on it, I'm going to say I'm probably about 75% there. It's, it's better than where I was, but, you know, change is inevitable. It happens on a day-to-day -day basis. It's coming. It's yes. Coming. Yes. And ladies too, get your questions ready and get your answers that for this question. That's a very important question. I think it's a great question, Keita. Thanks for coming up with that. Mimi, what you, you, I know you're pondering on that question. I'm pondering I am. on it. I'm pondering I am. on it too, because at one of our sessions, our SOS sessions, I had said, I think Keita and I was doing, I um, can't remember the title right now, but I had said that I like who I've become. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and like me, Keita said, I worked hard yeah. at introducing and living my real self. Mm -hmm. The same way with some of you heard my story when I was um, liking this gentleman at my job and I was kind of, you know, just going out, hanging out with him, uh, happy hour, lunch and all that, kind of sort of just hiding my true feelings about him. And one day I decided to tell him and he said, don't get mad. You're not my type. And I, of course, I had a second to, you know, hear that digested. And, you know, spaz out in my mind, not all I, I go hear, and then come back to my real self. Mm -hmm. And I like what Pastor Jill is preaching these days, Cairo's time. I didn't know I was in Cairo's time, but I went in Cairo's time because my real self said, hey, you have a right to your freedom of choice. Yes. I'm not going to take that from you because I don't want to give up my freedom of choice is because I know how important it is. Mm -hmm. Now, had I stayed in my time of the moment of the present moment what I was heard what I heard which is what Mimi alluded to earlier rejection I could have went another whole way we're gonna get to your thing um Deborah that's good mm -hmm. yes um read hey read oh I like that read read um Deborah's thing she Kita. says sometimes sometimes also unearthing and discovering new things about me and being open to God as well as opening myself up to learn more. And we, said, go, go ahead, ahead. No, go Jordan ahead. Said, I have to re remind myself that inside results are more important than outside results because outside results don't always look like I'm succeeding. Woo! Mm. That's it that's right there. Stuff, yeah. that's, that's some yeah. good stuff. And, and Deborah, don't go away because we're going to have you talk a little bit later because we're going to we're going to turn this around and mm -hmm. we're going to have y'all sisters to help us out, too. And you're all going to share some of your stories and where you had switched your identity for whatever reason, whatever, yeah. place, wherever you was at. And what I was saying earlier, because I was um, with that rejection, it, it's so it's so painful. Mm -hmm. But once you take and work and I was sharing earlier, I worked on myself. Before I could even make that statement, I like who I've become. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It was 20 plus years of getting to where I am today mm -hmm. to like the person, to like my personality, mm -hmm. to like the fact that I'm an extrovert, not mm -hmm. an introvert. I can be at home by myself, love it, but I love people. I love the excitement of people around. I love entertaining people. I love serving, all of that stuff that I truly was. Yeah. And I would suppress that, hide that. And um, thank God that the Lord began to work on me. So by the time I come to the Soul Factory 25 years ago, mm -hmm. is my math right? 1998? Somebody checked that for me. And, and Jill and Pastor Jill and Pastor Duran working on us with, with um, what, is that, what is that assessment we did back in the day? When you found out your personality. DISC. Before DISC, what was the other one that the church oh used? Uh, the temperaments? You talking about yes. temperaments? Yes. Girl, yeah. that, oh my God, that opened yeah. up for me. Like yeah. what? There's a name for this, yeah. for our personalities. And thanks, yeah. David, because I just took DISC because I'm working a new job, a temp job, and they just had me to take DISC. Okay. So even in that, I've changed. I was a CS. Now I'm an IS. I'm like, what in the world? But guess yeah. what? I'm growing. As um, Keita said, I'm learning. Mimi, what you got on that? That question so, that Peter had. Mm -hmm. So um, one, I like how Keita said that she is a work in progress. Um, but the other thing that I thought, 
the um, when I hear about that, I remember Jill asked me a long time ago. She said, Mimi, if you can't sing, if you can't act, if you if something happens and you're in a car wreck and you can't do any of these things that you that has brought you significance, um, who are you? Wow. And are you okay with that? Mm-hmm. And that question has <laughs> that question has like really run its tape like constantly in my mind sometimes when I make a mistake when um and it's a public mistake you know mm-hmm. um if I say the wrong thing it's just like that, that I think for me what I'm still working on is dying to that perfectionist part of me that perfectionist I wanna, I wanna, part I'm, of me. I'm glad you said that Mimi I want to ask a question have you ever seen perfection No, no, I don't, I don't even think... know if we would recognize it if we do. Come right on now, it, it's, it's all it. about it. It really is all about reputation and the way yeah. we perceive ourselves in other people's eyes. Yeah, or and not so, making mistakes. Right, because we yeah. think excellence. That's mm-hmm. different right. from perfection. That, that's that's one thing. Yes. Yeah. Excellence and yeah. perfection, because excellence has mistakes with it. Excellence yes. has flaws yes. and you can still be excellent. I, I know for a fact, like even like the intro, like the little, uh, the video that they did for my job, when I introduced myself on I'm that sorry, day, I was, stuttering. I was stuttering, didn't know what I was going to say. I mean, I was just so nervous, but when they edited, Ooh, they made me sound like I was like, I knew what I was talking about. But what people told me was that you, you, we could hear your heart. Right. right. And what what I'm learning through all of this is that um, to 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 glory in my weakness, yeah. because in my weakness, then God is made stronger. Yeah. So to answer your question, um, I think I think that I am getting to the point where I can laugh at myself. Well, mm-hmm. I don't I don't take myself too seriously. I, I've, I've definitely gotten to the point where I do like myself, love myself, mm-hmm. enjoy myself, enjoy my own company. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not define myself by what I do, but who I be now. Like That's I good. love how Jill says I'm a human being and not yes. a, a human doing. Yes. Like when I first introduced myself, I used to say, oh, I'm a teacher or, uh, you know, I'm a singer or I'm an actress. What I just said, hi, hi, Mimi. How are you? How are you? Wow. You know, you know, that's just who I am now. Stephanie yeah. said something earlier, and somebody yeah, did what, she, I was what... going to read that. Stephanie Bryant said, I'm still growing, but I'm getting some results, about 80% there. Then I had Stephanie Goodwin. She said, definitely liking myself and enjoying the freedom and peace that comes with it, continuing in discovery as God leads and brings me his and brings me his truth about me. Tammy said, I think I, I am well on my way to fulfilling fully presenting myself and not flinch when when faces or when faces or what seemed like disapproval would cause me shrinking back just being mean uh i think this is tiana said we will um she will open up the floor for questions when the panel is you know ready. you know what when you were reading keto what came to me when as tammy said with the facial expressions mm-hmm. you know we put the definition on the facial expression yes we do because if you look at me a certain kind of way, you can't know what I'm thinking until unless I say it out my mouth. But you do know people have made certain expressions that similar. So you can say, and culturally speaking, oh, that looked like a person is disappointed or that looked like a person is. Because mm. when I do this face like this, what do you think? Right? So we all know in our culture sometimes. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's almost like when you text, you as a reader put the tone to it, not yes. the writer. Mm-hmm. They may have a tone, but you haven't heard it. But you put the tone to it. So you could decide whether that tone is going to be light, pleasant. Oh, they saying this and that and this and that. How do you know? You reading the words yourself. Come on, sisters. Uh, we're going to open up the floors at time yet because we can um, go on and on because this is a very good subject, I think. And mm-hmm. Pastor Jill had was talking about it in one of her lessons and she was sharing with the audience, hey, watch SOS today because we're going to be talking about identity switch. Here's the thing. When um, I wanted to say earlier, you, your imposter self looks 
is your look of your real self. Mm -hmm. so you can't tell when I'm Gail, the true personality person, or if I'm faking and hiding and being my other self because I'm scared you might not like me because I'm afraid you might be disappointed in me because my, my whole self don't out, outside don't change. Right. My imposter and my real self look exactly the same because we are on the, on the outside exactly the same. It's the mm -hmm. inside that make us real, make us true, make us who we are. That's what Mimi said. I just introduced myself as Mimi now because out of all those things she do, mm -hmm. that, okay, it's your character that makes you who you are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're a nice person, if you're a mean person, if your disposition is and your energy, all that tells you, tell people who you are. Mm -hmm. Your energy is all negative. Um, a person I, I was, I had a uh, temp assignment and the person I was, was speaking with, one of the employees was so negative. And I, <laughs> I tried to hit and tell him um, that, but I was not successful in telling him that he was negative. So I just, he had a glass of water, a tall glass of water on his desk. And I said, oh, you know, I'm half full. He's like, yeah, you should be, you need to be. I'm thinking, oh, he didn't get that. I'm saying, you know, you have empty. <laughs> it's how you see things. But I should have just, you know, maybe another time because I, I wasn't successful in that moment. But you, we feel people, energy is real. Vibes are real. Yeah. You may try to hide who you are, but it will seep out somehow. That's right. Mimi experienced this with these people with the water. It will get through a crack. It will get in. Mm -hmm. The wind will get in. If you try to hide your real self, eventually you will come out. What I say early, it is tiresome yeah. being someone can else. I, can, I offer, can I jump in there for a sec? Absolutely. Just real quick sec. Two things. Tammy said something that really struck home for me um, when she said, I don't shrink back. Um, just going back to something Jill has always taught us about bringing your whole self into the room. Mm -hmm. I think we spoke about this a long time ago in one of the first sessions, how, you know, for me, I did not want to bring my whole self into the room because I felt that other people that, you know, my, myself was so big or my light was so big. It was making you feel bad about you. Mm -hmm. that if I bring my whole self into the room um <laughs> now that's pride but now I don't I don't I, I can't help that you know I can't <laughs> help because we all have light we yeah. all have light so all of us we should not feel jealous of someone else's light um um and 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 so that was one thing so thank you Tammy for that the other thing was um look, let me just go back to say this about the whole shrinking stuff I wouldn't let people know that I could sing I because I was too afraid that they would feel bad that they couldn't sing. Mm. So That's I didn't true. let them know that I could sing. Mm. Twisted in a way. It, it is. It's, it's very wow. twisted. It's very, very twisted. For a long time, I didn't let people know. But if I didn't know them and I never introduced myself and let them know that I could sing, I would not. I would not. Even if they would ask, could somebody sing? Mm. Because I knew when I came out, I come out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to, because for so long in that area, I've been rejected. People hating. So oh. that was one. And then the mm -hmm. other thing was, and that and it felt too bad. It, it was more, it was more important for me not to feel pain mm -hmm. than to just be myself. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Gail, when you said about character for me, mm -hmm. I was too concerned about, I was more working on the character than working on my character. Wow. And that was my wow. life. That's for profound. Yes. That's, That's profound. Deep. That was my life for year. Mm. That was my life for years. So now even, even one of the mottos that I have for my theater company, everything is working on the character on helping kids to work on their character on and off stage. Wow. Because that's where it really counts. Mimi. I think that's so important because if we really, really be our true self, who God really made us, this is what we will be doing now that you worked on you. So now, you know, the important things to work on for children. Yeah. Oh yes. Because they are our future, but not just that, because you know, the important character to work on. 
So it's when Keita says character. that she didn't have her, perhaps her family didn't give her the tools. That's what this is about. This is not just about, as, as Jill has taught us, as, as Deron has taught us, this is not just about us getting free so we can just get free. This is about also helping the next generation, passing on that information to the next generation because some of their parents, as Keita said, they're just giving what their parents gave them. Yep. They're giving the best they know how. But if we can help empower one another, we can help that next generation because this should not just stay here. And sisters, get ready. We're going to open up the mic because this is why we do this. Um, we are here to help our sisters. We have, this has taken us years, okay? You ain't going to get this in one setting. Um, you're going to get something, but not all of this. So don't feel bad about that, right? right. But what we do, we practice this thing. And we practice at different levels. We're not just in one level. We're not one dimensional. We're layered individuals, as um, me and Pastor Jill say, we are being human. We're human beings. So we're always evolving. We're always growing. And we're always uh, blossoming to who God made us, which I would love about God because he sees us as he made us, not as the environment um, uh, shaped us. And you know, um, Mimi said earlier about editing. This is what I think. I think when our environment, our family and do whatever they do and alter our personalities, alter ourselves, and we do that to, to our own self, then God has to come back and edit us to the true self, yeah. the real self. Yeah. Yeah. He's an editor, yeah. a buckler and a provider. Mm -hmm. This is why we practice those spiritual principles and remain God-centered because that's who we need to be. This is our true self. Our real center is God-centered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. And come on with it. You got something, Deborah? Stephanie, Valerie? Hi, Valerie. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you. I just met Valerie recently and told her about SOS. So thanks for joining us. Shout out. All right, what else we got? Anybody want to come out on the thing? Okay, do you remember when or what season or what it was that caused you to change and begin your journey? Oh, one time Pastor Jill said to me, okay, so that, that I don't know if that's a good uh, uh, <laughs> example because what she said was true. I was ghetto. <laughs> I shared that before with y'all. That was, that was probably my real self. I didn't think it was my real self. But it was my real self. So I don't want to give that example. But there were times when I absolutely, um, for a long, like let me say for years, years. So I can't even say exactly when. I just know during the shaping and working, when I was walking with Jill very, very closely, still am, but during the season when the breaking of me was coming out the opening of, of, of my blossoming, my real self was coming out. Because those who know Pastor Jill, you can't walk with that kind of power and wisdom and be untruthful, right? So, I be, so she had to see the real me so we can work on to getting the God in me. So I, so I was on two fronts. I was, you know, I had this facade and then my real self, and then we were working toward being righteous. So I was, you know, I was working that out, working being righteous, not being mean spirited, not being, I was a, I'm a, you know, sarcastic queen. I almost bought the t-shirt and the spirit, so let me put it back. <laughs> okay. And I mean, I was a get back queen. You're going to get me, I'm going to get you. And then I'm going to get you back next time. And then you're not going to know when I'm going to get you back. So I was a sneak tipper. Get you get back, queen. Uh, what else? Name it. I probably done it and was it. But now you meet Gail Cox. And I'm gonna tell y'all the secret for those who don't know. My government name is not Gail. My name is Marilyn. I know, right? For those who didn't know. So that who knew? <laughs> you didn't know that, Mimi. No. Where where Gail come from from Maryland? <laughs> I 
I can understand, Mary. Uh, that, that's, Marmar, another, that's another damn. whole, oh, we're going to do that one day. That's another whole story right now. But that all led to, right? So, but if you meet Gail Cox today, I'm not the Gail Cox that came to the church in 1998. That is for sure. Deborah, what you got? You unmuted. Go for it. All right. Well, I'll just say that uh, I'm still learning my true self. Um, and, and that's what I mean by God is a revealer. Um, there was a scripture that I was reading. I actually wrote myself a note today. Let's see. Basically, it was saying that. Um, so there's a scripture in Ephesians 4.31 that says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. And I really didn't think that scripture applied to me. But then in terms of, because I, I remember when Jill said something about feelings and I had to go look up what the heck feelings are to even be in touch with kind of what I'm feeling kind of thing. And so even now I'm just learning about feelings, but when um, whatever was revealed today, I had to say that in the end, I know that something has been living in me for a long time because if people, let's say, got in your space too close in my mind, I'm giving them an elbow and all this other stuff. But yet I would say when a person a long time ago said, you know, hey, I don't want to fight. I must have been giving some visible slant tone representation of what I wasn't even aware of. And now asking God to help show me what the source of that is. Um, so I'm, God is revealing me to me. And so, you know, I'm still, like you said, key to a work in progress, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> Good. Thank you for sharing that. That's yes. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. I love the work in progress. I keep saying I, that scripture that I have been standing on, laying on, crawling on <laughs> is that scripture that says the God who started this work in you will finish it. I yeah. used to do, I, I wasn't getting anywhere because I was trying to do the work. Mm -hmm. And when I finally read that scripture and took it, literally said, the God who started the work in you, mm -hmm. he will finish it. Mm -hmm. And it finally dawned on me. It was like, oh, God, you're supposed to do the work, not me. Yes. So I'll tell you real quick, too. I was reading this, this, this one book and it was a it was a father that had given a son a car for a gift. Mm -hmm. And he gave him the keys and he said, here's the car. So he came back sometime later, a few weeks or whatever, and asked his son, how's he enjoying the car? And he said, well, I love it. I love the color and I love everything about it. But it just, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's just so hard. He said, what do you mean it's hard? And he said, well, it's just so hard. He said, well, tell me, show me what you're doing. He said, he, he went, he, the father thought he was about to go inside the car. The son, it goes around to the back of the car and starts pushing the car up the hill. And the father's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm moving the car. This is how, the, this is how I move the car. I love it, dad. Thank you so much. But it, it is a lot. He says, son, give me the keys. He said, what are you talking about? He says, give, give, give me the keys, please. So he says, go around the car and get in. Get in. That's not how we do it, dad. Get in the car. <laughs> so he unlocks the door. The son gets in. The father gets in. And he turns on the car, turns on the ignition. He says, son, this is how you drive the car. Let, let, let me help you. This is what we do. And what it showed me is that for most of my life, I had been pushing this car, this gift that God had given me, this gift of salvation, that I've been trying to do it myself, pushing this car up the hill. And God and the Holy Spirit and the son has been saying, Mimi, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm pushing the car. No, let me drive. Mm. It, go sit over there let me drive let me help you and that's where my life has been since i've given that part over to god my wow. to do that that was wonderful mm -hmm. thank you mimi for sharing thank you kita thank you deborah yes deborah that's the spelling of my real name m-a-r-i-l-y-n marilyn like monroe 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> I know it's gonna trip some people out. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But um, also, and I was thinking Mimi and Kita that what's good about what the sisters are getting today is you can start today and you really can start liking yourself. I don't know that you do or don't, but if you do, you mm -hmm. great. If you don't, hey, let don't let someone else dictate to you how you should be. It, be real so that as you continue to grow and gain your God-centered self, mm -hmm. your sisters can help you with the part that needs sharpening in those areas. Because mm -hmm. I needed sharpening. I mean, I was like Pastor Jill used to say to me, you get people back, got, and they don't even know they've been got. I had to really go in myself. I had to really pull all of that out. Because as God was emptying me and, and filling me with his Holy Spirit and emptying my, ba my bad stuff, all that stuff that I wish some pit body would have walked off with the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was, I was keeping the bad stuff and they was walking off with my good stuff. So I just thank God that as the Holy Spirit is filling me, come into mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit with an empty vessel and let him fill you. I'm telling you, you can do it. We've done it. It took us years and who, it took us years to get here. So it takes practice and it takes time, it takes patience with yourself, right? Where are we at ladies? The second question, I think Keita yeah, posted. I just posted it. Your story, okay. what, what could you, you do have it? lived. Your story, what you have lived versus your story, what you have presented to the world. Are they the same? Mm -mm. no they're not they're not the same they they're they're aligned now okay. 25 years in the making but they were far apart uh, they were far apart for me they were far apart what was that question i had on our agenda um i wrote it um the one that said do you remember when mm. no who who were you oh who were you when you were not being yourself Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the other one we had on there too. I like that. Um, you can put that back up. That one and this one. Is it hard being who you really are or is it mm -hmm. easy? If it is hard, what or who makes it hard for you to be you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If easy, how do you maintain being you? Yeah. For me, I want to answer the bottom one. If it's easy, it's mm -hmm. easy now. It was very hard. Very, very hard. I went very, I would get very emotional. Um, it was days I would be by myself and crying because of an incident maybe, or someone misunderstood me or someone called me a name or accused me of being something that I absolutely wasn't being. Mm. And I couldn't understand why they viewed me that way. Mm. I'm not that way. Who, why are you thinking of me that way? Why you see me that way? And I was being my real self. Mm -hmm. And so I went through all of that. Um, mental gymnastics mm. you know up and down in my head and now that I'm being my real self what makes it easier to be my real self is one I, I I believe in myself and I believe in the God in me and two I'm not going to let someone else have that kind of power mm -hmm. over me being me mm -hmm. that's giving too much power to someone else to try to make you be someone else or who they need you to be when you're in their company no thank you I'm pretty mm -hmm. much going to probably not be in the company of a lot of people or others who are unable to accept me as I am. I'm probably, yes. my, my world was big and my is now getting smaller to those that mm -hmm. can accept me for who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 sometimes it, your, your life can be like a band, uh, a rubber band. Mm -hmm. you, it, it expands, you meet all these people and then it goes back in when some of these people, the outer people can't accept who you are. So I'm pretty much, I'm getting, I'm getting good at that now. I'm getting better. Okay. I would say it that yep. way. I'm getting better at that. Usually the, my circle, my SOS sisters, um, Pastor Jill, um, um, my soulmate, my, my cousin. And my, I mean, I can name people that's in my inner circle. Yeah. And they might not like all of how I do things, mm -hmm. but they love me. So that's the foundation of the relationship, that's it. That's it. right? Mm -hmm. So for you, is it hard, easy? 
Yep, Valerie, I'm with you 100%. Valerie, I know you, 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 you shy. <laughs> what are you? You're not going to share. You're not going to open your, you're going to, what you going to do? I can share. <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> Come on, with mean, it, girl. Hi, ladies. Thank you for Hello. today. It was all really good. Hi. Um, I met Gail not too long ago. So this is nice that I can be here. Yeah, I appreciate what everybody's saying. I think even just this point about, um, you know, we we had a birthday, we had, had a birthday celebration last night with some friends and uh, friends I didn't, didn't know well, but it's cool to see how every year we're kind of changing and growing. Um, and I think for me, something that shocked me, you know, being, especially being a Christian woman and also being international, I've, you know, I have many circles around the world and seeing that um, I'm not always going to be liked. And I appreciate what you're saying that when you grow, when you change, you know, it's a beautiful thing. You're being refined, whether by your environment or by God or, you know, events. And sometimes people can't handle that. You know, people you're close with or people right. who you love, they can't take your newer self, um, your changing self. And that was hard for me, to be honest. And I never in my life would I think to actually verbally tell people you can't be in my life anymore, or I don't want you in my life, or we can't have this friendship anymore because it's not, you know, the best and it's actually more toxic now. Um, or, you know, as I've grown and matured, seeing that, oh, this relationship is actually toxic and we're hurting each other, you know? And, and I think that was very, very hard for me, but I saw even through, you know, mentorship and advice a lot and prayer that it was probably what was best you know, it, 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 it was, yeah, I had to mourn it, you know, we always have to mourn those types of loss, and um, so I appreciate what you are all saying, I think it's very vital for me, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm about to turn 30 in April, but I feel, I still feel like a baby, <laughs> I'm still <laughs> growing and learning so much, so I appreciate learning that from, you know, uh, women of different walks of life and different ages of this is what happens and it's okay. And it's actually good, however painful it could be. Thank yeah. you, Valerie. Thank you for sharing. I Absolutely. You. Was it yeah. your birthday, Valerie? You. No, it was not my birthday. <laughs> my birthday oh, okay. is in April. I turned 30 in oh. April. So oh, okay. <laughs> I'm excited for that. I, I, love, I love getting older. <laughs> That's good. And I'm there glad you're able to share and be real with talent sharing with us. You know, we're not counselors um, and we share with people when you're going through something emotional and Perhaps it's um, traumatizing for you to seek professional uh, counseling. And, and because I did, a few of us did, and because we believe in that and we get our help that way. But what we do as sisters in the community, in, the, in this sisterhood that's created an open space to do just what Valerie just did. We, and we're here for you. Um, and we're, we're a community built so we can share with each other. Mm -hmm. So we can talk it out. Sometimes we just need to talk it out and hear it out loud for ourselves. And thank you, Valerie, for sharing how real that was, how hard. And who would have thought that you have to say words out your mouth to tell someone, we can't be friends anymore. Right. You know, I, I didn't verbally say it, but there I acted. I didn't call anymore. I stopped. And maybe it would have been good if I had probably did it that way and say, look, I think it's time for us to separate as friends. Maybe that wasn't so bad to do with that. You know, I could have done it that way, but I didn't. And I, and I stopped because I was hurting me. And, and like, I like what Valerie said, and we were, you know, we were hurting each other and maybe the other person was feeling some way too. And I didn't know it. Yeah. And I just, you know, so that's what I did. Tawanda, you want to share openly? Yes, it is easy as of now being me, but before I was trying to get acceptance from my family members. Yes, but I'm changing into a butterfly and I am definitely a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're right you there know, with you. I, I, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to share. I had to, so this is on a flip side. Mm -hmm. I, I had to uh, remove that part of me <laughs> that was hurting me. Mm. So, you know, like this person, Valerie had to tell a friend and we can no longer be friends. I had to tell that old part of me, we can no longer be friends right. because the, it's this song that says, um, 
Lord, help me because I'm hurting me. You know that that song I forget. Um, was that by La, La, what's her name? Somebody La Johnson. Yeah. All I, I do I, is I, hurt me. That is when I heard that song. Now, you know, you were, we were talking about, I'm sorry, I'm answering some of the question from before and bringing it to where, where we are right now. Yes. All good, it's all good. But as Gail said, there have been time, many times on the journey that, uh, that caused us to be where we are. So for me, mm -hmm. I can't really pinpoint an exact time because it was different times. But I do know when I heard that song, I wailed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have not heard it, find that song, <laughs> Google it. Find that and song, it, Tiana, Joanne, somebody, find that song. That song, some, yes, I yes, was yes. like, somebody put in words. Michelle Jackson, Johnson, Leandra Johnson. Leandra. Yes. And Leandra she Johnson. sings the heck out of that song. I said, somebody All actually I put do in words. Name. It's with um, oh, Tri City Choir. Tri City Choir with the there you we go. try to work it out, y'all. Keep going, man. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. But somebody actually put in words what my life has been, mm. had been for many, many years. And what the cause of it was, because I I didn't, I wasn't strong enough to let that that part of me go. I didn't realize, I felt like it was so intertwined that that was just me, that this is just the life I'm living of a self-sabotage life. Where in self sabotage, for those of you who don't know that term, is basically when you do things to um, keep yourself, as 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 Keita said, is your identity keeping you from where you want to be? That identity, that self sabotage, and it was the little girl mm -hmm. who was being rejected, who had been rejected for most of her life in various ways, that kept rising up. Her insecurities, my insecurities, would keep mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. From instead of rising to overcome the insecurities and learning from them and growing from them, it became my story over and over again. So b b b if, I, if I saw a, a resemblance of someone looking like they're about to reject me, I would go into this self-sabotage mode where I would either push you away and reject you before you can reject me. Or as we talked about in, in, a, in a long, in a, I think the very first one we did, it was, you know, clingy, clingy. And, um, or if I saw an opportunity that I really wanted to be a part of, I would tell myself, oh, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, I would tell myself all these things that would go wrong if I did it. So it was completely self-sabotage. So I finally had to get to the point, like Valerie told her friend, I had to tell this friend, mm -hmm. you know what? I understand you were, you were created because you were trying to survive but I've got to let you go. You are holding me back. Mm -hmm. If I had kept her friendship, I would not be here. Meeting wow. in Florida, in a new location, We're meeting new people. I came here by myself. And now I have all these different people that I have relationships with simply because I let her go. She was holding me back. So who was I? I think the question is, who? What's the what was the question? Who? The second question you did you put up, Keita? Uh, what when I said uh, your story, who you live versus the one that Gail, the one that Gail told us to oh, answer. Um, Is that the one? The one that Gail said. Uh, it's on the I'm gym. sorry. Is it hard for you? No, not who were you when you were being yourself, or is uh, it hard? Do you I remember? Guess, I guess do you remember when or what season or what it was that caused you to change and begin your journey to authenticity? Yeah, I think, I think I answered question. all that. It's answered the other. It was the other question, but thank you because Mimi, that's great, and what she was saying because I didn't think about it that way, and that we have to take a stand, and I remember against this person trying to take over you, and it, it remind me of your skit that you did with the five faces of Eve and who was yes. The, who was going to rule the life? Which personality yes. was going to be in command? Stephanie's hand. Stephanie raised her hand. Too. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stephanie. Hey, you guys. Um, hey. hey, Steph. Yeah, Steph. I'm finally on. I'm glad I'm on. Um, hey. I, I think. I think for me, it goes back to a couple of questions ago. I think it changed. No, I know it changed for me when I started feeling a certain way 
about how I was being a certain way and people's and people's um, presence. And like, I would get in the car, like, why did I say that? Why did I act like that? Why did I do this? And then I would feel a certain way when I had to, when I would say something and people were shocked that I might've known the answer or I might've known this. And mm -hmm. I had to really sit with myself and it had to be, it had to go all the way back to just like what Gail was saying when you had to conform because people would say things about you and you had to, you had to say, no, I'm not that. And I grew up and I can say it now proudly, I grew up being smart. I grew up because that's how I was taught. I grew up learning knowledge, all of that. So when I got to the point of trying to express myself, I'm sitting at a table and people, you always have something, you always know something. You always, you are. So I, I, I shunned back and I started playing dummying down and I started playing mm -hmm. dumb and I started doing this. And, mm -hmm. and then I would feel a certain way if I'm sitting there and I'm watching, I remember I was, I was at a retreat and I'm not our retreat, but I was at a retreat and I was listening, watching Jeopardy and I was getting almost all the answers. And then somebody just turned around and like, are you, I didn't know that you were smart. And just, just stuff like that would, would just make me go back into my shell. And it really wasn't until probably about five or six years ago where I really started like really getting with with God, meaning of 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 who I am and understanding who I am, because I could be who I thought I who I should have been when others were around, because that's what I wanted them to think that that's who. If that makes sense, like who yeah. who I am, like uh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say that. You better say something to me. Or I'm gonna say something to you. Da, da, da. But but truth be told, if it was just one on one, I'd be like. Oh, in my head, oh, she, oh, I should say that, but I'm not going to say that because that's going to start and that's going to be this. But now I can do it in a way that's not going to be, it's not aggressive, but assertive. And I can be mm. me and I can actually be the one in the room saying, huh, no, nah, I don't like that. I, I No, I don't like that. No, I don't want to go here. I don't want to, and without dummying down, because I would say it, it, it at first it was, no, I don't like that. What you mean I don't like that? I mean, I like it a little bit, but yeah, no. But now I'm at a point when I said that, when, when, when I said I am a work in progress and I'm, and I'm happy where I am because this is where God has me, but God is still going to continue to grow me in areas of where he needs for me to be, to be, uh, to be whole, fully whole. So Stephanie, I didn't know. That's it. Yeah. I don't know if people know you got your master's. Oh yeah. Don't you have, don't you have a doctorate? Well, I I finished my dissertation and then I ran out of money. So it was um it was a game the school was playing. So I I finished my dissertation on the psychological okay. and physiological effects of workplace bullying. But it was hey, um, wow, that's interesting. Look, that's we good. gonna hey um Stephanie, hold that thought because you're yeah. gonna be you're gonna we're gonna line you up for 2023 to be on mm -hmm. sold, sold out single so don't even play okay. that's fine don't that's even play fine. won't he all do right. it bring your smart self on here you hear me girl that's right <laughs> yeah but that's what so that's but, but pretty much that's where that's where it all changed for me and getting out and getting out all the stuff that i put in the book and everything else and just just shedding just She's shedding everything well yeah yeah but yeah but you're know, like shedding everything and just being of who I am and and going out without makeup or eyelashes or my hair and this and that and just being who I am and loving me is just oh, is it. so freeing. Mm -hmm. It's and don't get me wrong, sometimes I'm like Stephanie, go, 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 go. Look, look a little bit presentable. But because I <laughs> but but other than that, it's just it's a freeing. And I'm thankful for it. And I'm thankful that God is using me and showing me different areas of where it's like, okay, you should have said this, or why did you change that way? And making me uh, acknowledge it where it's, you know how sometimes you're just so used to doing things. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, mm, no, why did I do that? And now, now I'm like, cognizant. okay, God, yeah. Show, yeah, being cognizant, showing me where, where, why I did what I did and then having to go back and sometimes apologize, oh, you know, sometimes to go back and apologize for things and it's, and then owning up. I think 
I'm the only one in my company <laughs> or the one that I work for that actually acknowledges mistakes. And it's just crazy to me because we grew up, so we grew up in a, we were taught well. So I'm like, no, I'm, I acknowledge that. And people are like, why did you even say something? Because mm. I acknowledge my mistake. Thank so, you. but that's where I wanted to, I know that there was a couple of questions, but that's where I realized when I would go back home and I'm mm. like, why did I say that? Why did I conform? Especially with the lighter, I know I'm, I'm, I'm like off white, but people that are a little bit wider, <laughs> are lighter than me, <laughs> lighter than me in the, in the area where, why do I feel that I have to present myself in a way or, you know, or then dumb me down if I'm in my own community? No. So it was who I am and I, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving me. Mm-hmm. There so you that's go. what I wanted to share. There you go. We're going, we're going to play a little bit of, um, yeah. all right, Valerie, thanks for joining us. See you soon. We got a lunch date coming. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of audio started at Leandra singing, not Donna Lawrence saying those words, hit a little bit of that. Cause we got to end with a song. That's going to be our benediction. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you truly for our girl Mimi being back. SOS hitting mm-hmm. us with that poem. Some one will almost walked away with all my stuff. Yes. And I want it back, but that's on you to get it. Right? Let's get the love, that joy, yes. that peace of mind, and all that great stuff.